Um, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Illinois students, sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. My name is Mary Alice Berg, and I'll be your facilitator for today's Loris College session. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This was just one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule and watch previously recorded sessions at IACAC.org. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available uh, within about a week at that same website, IACAC.org. Um, I would now like to turn it over to my presenter from Loris College. Enjoy. Hi guys, so my name is Cody Ritchie. I'm so excited to be here to chat with you a little bit about Loris today. Um, so Loris is a small Catholic uh, liberal arts private school. Um, we have about 1500 students in attendance and we have over 40 majors to choose from. One of the things that uh, we get really excited about is all the different involvement opportunities that students have at Loris. So between athletics, um, intramurals and then clubs and organizations, there's over 100 things that students can get involved in. Uh, but let me back up just a little bit and talk a little bit um, about the size of Loris. So as I said, we do have 1500 students in attendance. Uh, we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. So nice small classes, um, really great opportunities to get to know people um, and to get to know those professors. So um, the largest class you're ever gonna have here at Loris is actually 40 students in total. So our two lecture, lecture halls in our science hall, um, they actually hold lots and lots of people, um, but for the most part, they will use those for big meetings, faculty and staff meetings, um, even meetings with the football team. Um, so when they actually use them as classrooms, they cap them off at 40 students because they wanna make sure that, you know, you get a chance to talk with your professors um, and get to know them. So biggest class you're gonna have here at Loris is 40. And then those courses are actually broken in half um, when you have your lab. So you only have 20 people at a time. Um, when you're doing the hands-on part, you really get a chance to talk to those professors, ask those questions, um, things like that. So supports are very prevalent here at Loris. It's really easy to get assistance. So of course our professors have office hours that are available. Um, so anytime that you need help, you can just stop by and ask them, get some additional help. Um, but if you maybe want some extra support or some extra studying, um, you can definitely go down to our library and get some extra help down there. Um, we have a writing center. So if students wanna, you know, once you write your first paper in college, even though you were a great student in high school, it's, you know, just wanna check and make sure that you're on the right track when you get to college. So you can go down to the writing center um, and they'll check that everything is correct for you. Um, there's also tutors down there for Spanish courses and as well as the science courses and math courses. So for math, the students down there that are helping, um, any of our tutors have passed the course previously with a 95% or above. Uh, but our math tutors are available down there as well. Um, but we actually also have a couple of our professors, our math professors, a couple that are married. Um, they live right across the street and they actually will invite students into their homes um, once a week. They're obviously not doing that right now during COVID, but normally um, that's the case. So students can just go across the street, um, hang out with them, get help with their math homework, even if they're not in their math course, which is really pretty cool. Um, so lots of support, um, all of our, our faculty and staff are very personable um, and very excited to help you as a student. Um, if you're in one of those heavy math or I'm sorry, heavy science courses and you need some assistance. Um, so whether it's like chapter notes to get ready for a test, um, if you have, you know, you're, you're getting ready for a test and you want to do a practice test or a practice quiz, um, that's available with your um, supplemental instruction um, with those science courses. So lots of support to help get you on your way. Um, in addition to that, our professors really get to know you on an individual basis. So, um, you know, if you miss a course, you know, you miss a class one day, like it's not like your professor is going to come like bang on your door and ask where you were. Um, but if you miss several courses or several classes or maybe your grades start to drop or something, they're going to ask about you. They're going to check in, make sure that everything is OK, see if there's anything that you need. Um, you know, so you always have a chance to just really get to know those professors well and know that they're on your side. Um, so you're going to feel very supportive here at Loris. Also, your um, advisor is going to be one of the professors within your major. So you don't have to actually declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. So you have lots of time to kind of explore and figure out exactly what it is that you want to do. But once you do declare that major, your advisor will be one of your professors. So it's someone that, you know, you're having class with, someone that's graded your papers. 
um, somebody that, that knows you really well. So as you're trying to pick, maybe, you know, you want to double major, or you want to do a minor, or you're thinking about studying abroad or something like that. Um, you can check in with, um, with your advisor who, again, is in class with you and knows you really well. Um, and they can really help you kind of make that decision and help guide you through that, which is really, really nice uh, to just have, you know, have that connection. Um, after students graduate from Loris, they are just so excited to get back and stay involved with the school. Uh, we have a, just a fanatic alumni base. Um, we actually have about 1,500 students on campus. As I mentioned, we have 6,000 people come back for homecoming every year. If you're a math major out there, uh, you realize that that is four times our student body um, amount of people that are coming back every year for homecoming. And it's just because they had an awesome experience. They were super involved in Loris and they loved it here. Um, but those students are, or those alumni are also reaching back out to professors and saying, hey, like I have this awesome internship opportunity or job opportunity. Um, so we'd really love a chance you know, to get a do hop or get someone from your program, um, you know, to come in and those professors know you really well. So they can say, yeah, like Ashley's going to be an awesome fit for that or Sarah would be great for this program. Um, so it's really nice, again, to just have that, that great connection um, with your faculty and staff here um, on campus. So Loris does, uh, we do the traditional um, fall and spring semesters, but we also do January term. So you're going to get out, um, you know, for Christmas break, second week of December or so. Um, and then our spring semester actually starts the very beginning of February. So during January, you're gonna have um, essentially what we call J term or January term. So you're gonna take a single three credit course and just for about three weeks, then you get a one week break and then spring semester is gonna start. So January term is awesome um, for students that wanna study abroad, especially if they're involved in athletics because they are only gone for about two or two and a half weeks um, during January term. Uh, January term is required your freshman year and another time before you graduate. But other than that, it's totally up to you. If you want to take one every year, you absolutely can. Or you can just have that really nice extended break um, those other two years. Um, if you're here for sports, you may be, you know, on campus anyway for athletics. So it's a really nice time to take that extra course. You know, and if like, let's say, for example, you play football and you want to take maybe a lighter course load during the fall, you could take 12 credit hours during the fall, take a three credit J term and then take 15 hours during the spring. And you're still getting 15 credit hours per year, which is exactly what you want to shoot for to graduate on time. Uh, so J term really helps make that nice and flexible. Um, conversely, if you play softball or you play baseball and, you know, maybe spring is your is your heavier time, you want to take 15 hours during the fall three hours during J term and you can take 12 hours during the spring. So that's a little bit lighter for you. So that's really nice as well. Um, again, tons of athletic programs, tons of organizations to get involved in. Um, we're a division three school. So if you're interested in continuing sports, there's probably gonna be an opportunity for you here at Loris. Um, you know, lots of lots of opportunities again to get involved. Um, and I'd be happy to connect you with one of the coaches on campus um, if there's a specific sport you'd like to know a little bit more about. Um, and again, tons of organizations. So if you can't find the group you wanna be a part of or the organization you wanna be a part of, you can start it. Um, one of the admissions reps in our office actually started the uh, triathlon group when he was an undergrad and another one started our acapella group on campus when he was an undergrad. Um, so if whatever interest you have, we probably have a group or a club for it. Um, another thing that Loris does that I think is really unique um, is when you do your housing application, they give you a list of about 16 um, different interests to choose from, um, and they're very varied. So there's, uh, there's like video game, like gaming on there, um, shopping and fashion, um, outdoors, hunting, fishing, that kind of stuff, uh, crafts, fine arts, cooking, um, you know, obviously, of course, um, you know, interest in spiritual life. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities and you rank from those 16 things, you rank your top five. And then when they put you in the halls for your dorm, they actually take those interests into account. So they try to group people with similar interests um, so they can get together. So, you know, the students that are interested in cooking might go downstairs to the community kitchen once a, you know, maybe once a month and cook dinner together. Um, something like that, or the kids that are into, into gaming and they get together um, and do tournaments together in their hallways. So um, just a really cool opportunity to meet people no matter what, whether you're in a club, whether you're in a sport, um, there's still ways to get involved with people. Um, our college activities board makes sure that it's never boring on campus. So they have something going on pretty much every evening and every weekend. Um, they bring in hypnotists, they show movies, um, you know, they do all kinds of things to keep to keep um, campus entertained. They do lots of craft nights. 
Um, so very cool things just to make sure that, you know, if, if you're staying on campus for the weekend that you have something to do. The majority of our students do stay on campus during the weekend because um, there's just so much to do and they're so involved and they're having a great time. So um, if there's anything that you want to get involved in, there's probably something going on through College Activities Board uh, pretty much every night of the week. So always a lot of fun stuff to do. Um, I mean, I feel like that that kind of wraps up student life. So we can go ahead and talk about the financial situation just a little bit. Um, and then if there are any questions or anything that I can answer, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, so moving kind of into the financial side. So Loris is a private school, so we are going to have um, one of those kind of higher sticker prices to start out with. But we have lots of ways to help bring that down and make your education affordable. Um, so here at Loris, your overall um, pricing at Loris is about $43,000 per year. Um, and so I think it's really important to talk about what it is that that includes, because sometimes when you look at schools, uh, the only price that they report is tuition. Um, but our number actually includes everything. So it's tuition, it's room and board, it's your meal plan, uh, your housing, all of that is included. Um, and then also any of your student fees. And of course, we also have a laptop program here at Loris, which is really nice. Um, that is completely included for students. So that laptop program, we actually assign you a laptop as a freshman. We give you a new one when you're a junior, so we completely replace that for you, which is really nice. Um, and as parents, you don't have to worry about anything to do with that laptop. So if your student damages it um, or you know, maybe has like a virus or something like that, um, your maybe your charger stops working or something like that, you can just take it down to our help desk and they will help you out with that. Um, essentially, as long as you know you don't do like water damage it or you know like run your truck over it or something like that, like tossed out a window, um, you're really not going to have to pay anything. Um, you know, with that laptop, it's pretty much all covered for you. So um, it's just really nice to know that your student won't have to you know run across town to Best Buy or get someone to take care of it for them. Um, and then as you go down to the help desk, if they can't fix it for you immediately, they will actually give you a lender so you can take that home with you until they're able to fix your uh, your personal machine. So all kind of taken care of for you. It's really nice. Um, again, so I mentioned that um, that overall price includes tuition as well. So if you decide to take a J term class, that tuition is covered for you. So you're not going to pay extra fees um, unless you're, like if you study abroad or you, you know you do something like that. There may be some extra fees with the course, but the tuition itself um, is covered for J term in that number as well. So that's all. It's basically it's all packaged up for you, nice and neat. Pretty much the only things you're not going to see included in that are going to be your books and if you choose um, a parking pass. So any student can park here on campus at Loris. It's about $100 for that parking pass. Um, so that's that's pretty negligible as far as college costs go. Um, but basically everything, like I said, is pretty much wrapped up in there for you. So regardless, like that's, that's you know kind of an expensive number, and we want to make sure that we're getting college down to you know something that's affordable and realistic for you. So um, I think the first thing to note is that 100% of students here at Loris do receive an acceptance scholarship. So our acceptance scholarships range between 16 and 20 thousand uh, dollars. So that's going to be a nice chunk that you'll take right off the top, and that scholarship will be good for all four years while you're here at Laura. So you'll have that the entire time, uh, which is really nice. Right now we're still in the window for um, our early acceptance, early FAFSA award. So if you have, if you've sent your application into Loris and you've been admitted um, and you have your FAFSA completed and sent to us by the 1st of December, we are gonna give you an extra $500 scholarship as well. And you can also get that $500 every year. You just have to update your FAFSA by that date each year. Um, so it's really easy to, you know, just get those extra funds. Just make sure that you mark that in your calendar so that you don't miss it. Um, and I also should also mention that right now, um, Loris has moved to test optional. So for students that have a GPA um, above a 3.0, the only thing you will need to send in is your transcript. So we won't need a test score. Um, from a student at all. Um, again, we are test optional. So if you are a little bit below that uh, 3.0, let's say you're uh, 2.75. Um, so if you're 2.75 or above and you don't wanna send in um, a test score, you didn't get a chance to take a test because we know a lot of students didn't, um, you actually have the option to send in two letters of recommendation. So those can come from counselors or coaches. Um, or of course your, your teachers or professors. Um, if your GPA falls below that 2.75, then we will ask you to send in a test score. Um, and as long as your GPA is um, above 2.5 and that test score is either uh, 20 ACT or 1030 SAT or above, you'll be admitted from there. Um, and if your scores fall below that, that's okay. Um, no, nothing to worry about. Just go ahead and send those in to us and you will speak with our admissions director. Um, just get, he'll just get to know you a little bit more, make sure that you're on the right track. 
Um, and then from there, um, we'll move forward with getting you admitted here to Loris. So um, lots of ways, lots of options, um, but it's really nice to know that if you didn't have a chance to take that ACT or SAT this year, um, we may not require that from you to get admitted. Um, so again, those acceptance scholarships starting um, at 16 and go up to $20,000. Um, we have a couple of additional $1,000 awards this year uh, based on demographics. Um, so you may qualify for some of those. Um, and then moving on, of course, we'll have you send in your FAFSA. And as we look at that FAFSA, you may qualify for grants through the government, or you may qualify for grants through us here at Loris, just from the school. Um, so make sure that you send that in. Um, and, you know, maybe something's happened. Maybe um, something's happened with your family in the last couple of years that's really changed your finances. Um, of course, we all know that COVID's affecting everybody right now. Um, but, you know, maybe you've had a, maybe you've had an injury in the family and somebody's had several different medical bills. Maybe there's been a job change. Um, you know, maybe you have a younger sibling that's in private school um, or just some other expenses that the FAFSA just really doesn't capture, um, you know, as you fill that out. Uh, make sure you talk to us about that because we may be able to write some of that information off for you. We have a special circumstances form. So if there is something, um, you know, that, like I said, just isn't captured on your FAFSA, let us know. We'll help walk you through that and see if there's some additional stuff that we may be able to take off um, of your FAFSA. And in some cases, uh, students and qualify for additional grant money. So definitely talk to us about that. Um, and then moving on from there, of course, Loris is going to accept um, any outside scholarships. So if you look at scholarships, you know, through your guidance office um, or you apply for national scholarships, we will accept any of those. Um, I've had students bring in thousands of dollars for the first semester. So definitely take a little time looking at those. Um, and then Last but not least, of course, we have scholarships here at Loris that you can um, apply for. We have program-based scholarships. And I think the easiest way to think of program-based scholarships is to maybe think about like being in a club. Um, so when you're looking at those, um, it just kind of depends on your interests and your situation. So we are a Catholic school, so we have a couple of scholarships that are specifically for students that are Catholic. Um, one of those is our Bright Box scholarship. So that is a $4,000 scholarship. Um, it is for students that are of Catholic faith um, and that are high achievers um, with great GPAs, great leaders, great thinkers. Um, they do some volunteer work um, and they also actually travel to J term or travel to Italy during J term their junior year, which is a really cool part um, of the scholarship, but uh, just a really awesome program to be a part of. It's pretty competitive. They take 15 students per year, uh, but if that, uh, if that fits you, I definitely suggest um, applying for that one. We also have our St. John Paul II scholarship, also specifically for students of Catholic faith. Um, and they do, they do a lot of volunteer work, so a great one to look at as well. Um, in addition to that, we have interfaith, which is for students of any faith background. Um, so students that are Catholic, Protestant, even students that don't practice a faith tradition, um, everybody is welcome in interfaith. It's an awesome program where students get a chance to learn about other people's backgrounds and stories and kind of how uh, faith has played a role in their life and shaped uh, their perspectives and their thoughts and just kind of how they see the world. Um, awesome as far as, you know, just getting a wider um, global perspective, a great resume builder, awesome things to talk about in an interview. Um, in addition to interfaith, we also have civic leaders open for any student. Um, and it is also um, really about volunteer work. So they do some volunteer work in the hospitals their freshman year. Um, they go out into the different like government agencies and municipal buildings um, their sophomore year and then junior and senior year, they can build their own, uh, actually their own volunteer project, which is really awesome uh, to kind of have that autonomy. Um, again, a great resume builder, great things to talk about um, after you graduate when you have interviews. Um, so all great, um, great programs to take a look at. Um, additionally, if you are musically inclined, we do have music scholarships here at Loris. Um, they are audition based, so typically you prepare two, um, two pieces for those. Um, and those scholarships are anywhere between uh, $500 and $3,000 per year. And to, to um, get those scholarships, students just have to be a part of one of our bands or choirs. Um, you don't actually have to be a music major or music minor. So if that's something that you love and you enjoy, uh, but maybe that's not your career path, it's really nice to know there's an opportunity to get a scholarship with that and continue with something that, uh, that you're really interested in. Um, so great scholarship to look at if, if music is a part of your life. Um, we also have a STEM, a STEM scholarship. So if you're interested in science, technology, engineering, or math, um, you can apply for our STEM scholarship. Um, it's a really great program as well. And then finally, we also have, um, 
our first generation program. So first generation program is for students where neither parent has a four year degree. You can apply for it, say like you have an older sibling that has a four year degree, that's totally fine. As long as mom and dad don't. So if mom and dad have some college or an associate degree, um, you can still apply for first generation. Um, it's a great program, it's a $1,500 scholarship and it's essentially set up to help students be successful um, and kind of get, get all the information that maybe if you know their parent had graduated with a four-year degree, some stuff that they like could say, oh, I wish I'd known this and someone had told me this. Well, that's what the first generation program is doing. They're helping give that information that your parents would have given you, you know, had you had a four-year, had they had a four-year degree. So really great support system to help you stay on track, make sure you graduate, um, and just make sure that you're being successful while you're here at Loras. Um, so lots of opportunities, lots of things to apply for, um, you know, to help get that cost down. Um, as long as students are, you know, applying, um, looking for scholarships, um, you know, applying for our scholarships, you know, getting their FAFSA in and talking to us so that we can help them. Um, you know, a lot of times our students find that school is actually just as affordable um, at Loras as it would be if they went to a state school. So just make sure that you're talking to your admissions representative and communicating, telling them if you have any concerns. Um, and we'll be here to, to kind of fight on your behalf and try to make sure that we find everything that's coming to you as far as uh, financial aid is concerned. Um, you know, we want to make sure that that we're helping you graduate without a ton of debt. Um, and we also will work really hard to make sure that you're graduating on time. We have an awesome success rate of students graduating in four years. We also have a 98% employment rate um, within the first year after graduation um, for the last five years. So students are either employed um, or they're in graduate school within a year of graduation, which is really, really awesome. And over 80% of those students are working in, um, you know, in something that's related to their area of study. So we're very, very proud of that. Um, and then finally, one of my favorite statistics is our four-year graduation rate. So um, as I mentioned, we really try to help make sure that you're getting out of here in four years so that you're not racking up a ton of student debt. Uh, we have about an 85% four-year graduation rate. If you compare that um, to, you know, state schools um, and four-year institutions across the country, that average is a lot closer to 50%. Um, most of those students are graduating in five or six years. So you'll get an awesome education with great opportunities, make amazing connections here at Loras. Um, and also most of the time you're going to graduate in four years, which is going to keep you from having so much student debt. Um, so make sure you check out Loras. It's a great place to be. Uh, we're here to answer any questions we have for you. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, go do Hawks and let me know what questions I can answer for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for such a great presentation today, Cody. Uh, no um, problem. <laughs> I have a couple like housekeeping again, um, things for our audience. Um, after you close your screen, you will see a short survey pop up just for questions. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Um, and this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So please be sure to check out additional sessions um, online at IACAC.org. Um, to check out all those recordings. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording in case you need to go back and like take notes or um, kind of look back at any of the great resources that Cody shared with us today. Um, that will also be at IACAC.org. Um, thank you so much to everyone. Thank you to Cody for sharing all of this great information with us. Um, thank you to the students who are watching today and have a wonderful day. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs> thank you. Bye Cody. Bye. <laughs>